All right. Thank you, Abby. So those were uh, our three U.S. Senate candidates who were able to join us today. Got some great options there. Hopefully you guys uh, got a chance to learn more about those candidates. We are now moving to a uh, one of our candidates for governor. It is State Representative Roz Smith. So Roz, come on up. Ames, good afternoon. It's been a it's been a little while since I've been here on the Iowa State campus, but uh, my name is Ross Smith, and I'm currently a state representative representing my hometown of Waterloo in the Iowa Legislature. Uh, in January, I will go back to start my sixth year uh, in the Iowa House. But uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about courage. Uh, you know, we just celebrated Veterans Day, and I think about the courage it's taken for those men and women to serve our state and our country. And that courage isn't lost on me. See, my family story is one that while I'm born and raised here in Iowa, uh, my dad's lived here most of his life, my mom lived here most of her life, um, my family story starts uh, from my dad in a little town called Chula, Mississippi. Uh, my dad was born there on a sharecropping plantation. Uh, the same sharecropping plantation that my grandmother was born on and his great-grandmother was born on. And, and I think about that day in 1957 when my grandmother quit, couldn't quite make that plantation rent. And she decided that in the middle of the night, she put my dad in the back of a station wagon and they'd leave Mississippi and come to this state up north called Iowa. My dad went, went on to work for 40 plus years at John Deere but in that moment, I think about the courage that that took for my grandmother. I think about that moment, how she reclaimed her power. How she stood up and did the right thing without asking for permission. See, that's the courage it's going to take for us to take Iowa back. And, and that courage is one that, that it's ingrained in our heritage as a state. See, I remember when I was at Iowa State University and I walked out of one of my oral communications classes and I looked to my right and I saw that stack of newspapers that was acknowledging that in the state of Iowa, we were going to acknowledge that love is love with marriage equity. That's the Iowa that I know. That's the courageous Iowa that I believe in. I think about how when the federal government was trying to figure it out, Iowa didn't have segregated schools. That's the courage in the Iowa that I believe in. And so in this moment, I'm asking us to take courage that's not unfamiliar to who we are as Iowans. I'm asking us to stand in line with our history, to be bold, to elect leaders that believe that in this moment, see, we don't have to ask for permission to do the right things. We can just speak truth to power every opportunity that we get. And so I'm asking you to be courageous in this moment, to not be afraid to be bold, to speak truth to power, because that's who we are as Iowans. Uh, in my time in the legislature, I can tell you I've seen a lot of courageous moments and I've seen a lot of cowardly. I've seen a legislature and a governor that's targeting the people of this state when they speak up against her. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, I'm running to be the governor of Iowa because I believe in this place. Uh, my wife and I, who's here, uh, we raise our daughters back home in Waterloo. And every day when my daughters walk to school, I think about those courageous educators who, after a pandemic, after the governor taking away their collective bargaining rights, still show up. They're still courageous for our students and families. I, I think about the farmer who goes out into the field knowing that they're going to get cheated on their commodity price, but every day they put in the work to make sure they can feed not just our community, but feed the globe. And so I'm asking you to be courageous. I'm not running to be an obstruction of governor. I'm running to get some things done. See, I'm, I'm, I want to build off of the work that we've done in the legislature. In my tenure there, in my, in my tenure there uh, I've been the ranking member of the House Education Committee for going on four years. And in that work, I've worked every day to stop the spread of vouchers in our school systems. Working every day to make sure that our public dollars go to our public school system, because that's the heritage and history of Iowa. In my time in the legislature, I, I've been able to build relationships to get some things done. See, as Democrats, it's not enough just for us to get elected and win. 
We've got to get elected, win, and get some stuff done. That takes relationships. In my time in the legislature, I've been able to work with Republicans to pass the plan from a perfect union. Uh, back in June, in the, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, we came back for a two-week special session. I can tell you, it was one of the hardest things we've ever done in this state. It took me meeting with Black Lives Matter and law enforcement, Democrats and Republicans, convening the governor in her office to say today, we're gonna stand up to ban chokeholds in the state of Iowa so that we will never have a George Floyd situation under our watch in this state. That's the courageous Iowa that I believe in. And I'll leave you with this. Uh, I'm the son of a pastor. My mom still pastors my church back in Waterloo. And I remember one Easter Sunday when we had some folks that weren't gonna come to church. Uh, if you know anything about Easter Sunday, you dress to the, to the nines, right? You get your new suit, your new dress, your new clothes, new shoes. And we had some folks in my church congregation that couldn't afford new clothes and they weren't gonna come to church. I remember that Saturday, my mom being on the phone with these folks and saying, no, 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 no. You just come as you are. You see, she didn't want clothes or money to be the thing from stopping people from, from participating in church. But it's bigger than that. See, money shouldn't stop you from participating in community. And so now that our church, every Easter Sunday we have a new tradition where we wear jeans and a t-shirt, we call it our Come As You Are Sunday. And so I invite you all to come as you are. Be a part of our campaign. See, I don't expect you to be perfect. We don't have to all have it all figured out. The expectation is not that you wear a cape. You can leave that at home, right? But show up being prepared to do something. Show up armed with courage, understanding that it's gonna take work. But if you're somebody who's not doing anything, you've got to do something. If you're somebody who's doing something, I need you to do a little bit more. And if there's somebody here who's probably doing that a little bit more, we need all that you have. If you can do that, if we collectively can commit to doing that with courage, we can build an Iowa where everybody has value. We can build an Iowa based on the heritage of this state, an inclusive Iowa, an Iowa that if you work hard, you get ahead. So come as you are. Join our campaign. Go to RossForIowa.com. We need you, and we need your courage. Thank you so much. I can't wait to be back here, Ames. Thank you. We are going to switch the order up a little bit, and we're going to bring up another governor candidate, Ms. Deidre DeGere. of a truck at this park. J.D. Shelton was running in 2020. He had me out here in the dark on Halloween. But it was a good experience and I'm happy to be back. And thinking back on 2020, you know, we didn't get all the wins that we wanted. And I'm standing here before you running for governor because I want, want to let you know why I'm running. But I also want to let you know that America's not done with Iowa yet. America is not done with Iowa yet. They're not going to count us out. And the reason why I'm running for this office is because I believe in each and every one of you all who are bundled in your cars in this moment in time because you are showing up during a football game because you believe in what this state is capable of. <laughs> and your belief in what this state is capable of is not a pipe dream. It is not a pipe dream. Your belief in what this state is capable of is based on what this state has been able to accomplish over centuries. And yet we have leadership right now who is proposing to lead this state. Yet we see a great deal of challenges that Iowa is facing, yet she's not standing up to fight for those challenges. And I believe that Iowa's worth more work than policy and, and politics that is d dividing each and every one of us every single day. I believe that this state is capable of so much more given that we have leadership that one believes in you. 
And so let's talk just for a few minutes because I, I want to break this down to you, not only about my why, but what we can accomplish. I've been traveling throughout this state, seeing the challenges that everyday Iowans are facing. And it's become more and more apparent to me that our governor is taking us monumental steps back. I want you all to know that what you are asking for is not unreasonable. Some will like to call your ideas, your concepts, your hopes, your dreams for this state to be socialist ideas. I don't know what that means. But what I do know is that your request for access to affordable health care is not an unreasonable request. It's reasonable. What is unreasonable is that we have Iowans in rural Iowa driving 90 miles to go seek care. What is unreasonable is that we've got urban Iowans living right next door to the hospital and still can't get the care that they need. What is unreasonable is that we were facing a mental health crisis that was even more burdensome considering what COVID dealt to us, yet we still aren't getting the resources we need to take care of the mental health of Iowans across the this state. That is what's unreasonable. It's a reasonable request to ensure that our students in high school, middle school, and elementary get access to a quality education that's not only going to ensure that they're good Iowans, but it's going to ensure that they're prepared for either high or college or a job after they graduate. That's a reasonable request, folks. This week, we saw around the corner from me, Sadell had to close school because they didn't have enough teachers. We saw this week in Cedar Rapids, 250 jobs for educators open. They tell us that we've got a teacher shortage. We don't have a teacher shortage in this state. We've just got to get the teachers back in the classroom. And the way that we do that, folks, is not only funding education, but, but the other way that we do that is to restore the educators' bargaining rights in the classroom. When I'm in Western Iowa, they're talking about losing their teachers to Nebraska. When I'm in Northern Iowa, they're talking about losing their teachers to Minnesota. When I'm in Eastern Iowa, they're talking about losing their teachers to Illinois. Our teachers are valuable assets to our community. And the time has come that we show them their worth. You know, we have a governor that's taken our municipalities and our, and our county's authority in local control. No more, folks. No more. No more. And so as I stand here today, thinking about education, I was first introduced to this state through the Iowa Basic Skills Test. And that Iowa Basic Skills Test was a testament of what this state was capable of. We were once number one in education. Now, depending upon the list, we're 18, 19, 20, 21. It's a reasonable request for us to get back to number one. We also see challenges with our workforce. We have a, a worker shortage. We have a skills gap. You know, several months ago, our governor decided to make a unilateral decision, say we're gonna cut off unemployment so people can get back to work. It didn't work. It didn't work, why? Because this state is in dire need of a comprehensive economic development plan a comprehensive economic development plan that, that is going to include our small businesses, our manufacturers, our farmers, and our educational institutions because everybody has a place in Iowa's economy. And only a comprehensive economic development plan is going to move this state forward. I am going to be that governor that puts our economy first, puts people back to work, and ensures that when they get to work, that they're safe on that job. When they get home, they can put food on their table they can pay their rent and they can also contribute to their communities because that is a reasonable request. And I'll end on this as it's getting cold up here. You know, we as Democrats sometimes when we don't get all the wins that we want, we kind of put our head down and we get disappointed because we put everything into each and every one of the elections that we're a part of. We put our hearts and our souls on the line 
Sometimes we lose friends in the process because we care so much. But now is the moment, folks, where I'm going to ask each and every one of you all to dig deep. And I know every election cycle we say, this is a critical election. <laughs> but folks, this is a critical election. It is. We have an opportunity to not only elect a governor, a senator, and for Congress folks throughout this entire state and all of our down ballot races and all of our statewide office, we have an opportunity to elect folks who are going to best represent the values of Iowans. And I know we didn't get all the wins that we wanted in 2018. I know we didn't get all the wins that we wanted in 2020. But what we did get for sure was lessons learned. A lesson learned from 2018. We've got to do better with independence. Only 45% of independents showed up in 2018. There's over 700,000 of them. They're looking for a place to belong. Why not come to the Democratic Party in this state? The, the party with the big tent. The party that puts a welcome mat open for people. Why not come there? But when they come, we've got to be ready, folks. We've got to be ready. And this is what we've got to be ready for. We've got to be ready to fight for common ground. I know we've been fighting to prove a point. I know we've been trying to fix all of the, uh, the facts that are, or the, not even the real facts that are out there. I know we've been trying to set the record straight when people say things that aren't right. But in these moments, I'm asking you to just dig a little bit deeper. Because in this election cycle, we're going to allow the Republicans to be their authentic selves. We're not in the business of changing them or what they believe in. We're in the business right now of looking, in, looking independence eye to eye and, and trying to find that common ground, trying to find that place where we agree. That is what's going to bring them into our party. We also have to do better amongst Democrats. My age group, my age group, 24 to 35, less than 50% of them turned out in 2018. And we can do better there. We're the folks that helped get Barack Obama elected. We know how to vote. We know how to vote. Yeah, guess what? You know, my generation is disenchanted with politics. They don't believe it works anymore. They don't believe that, that politics works within their best interests and their family's interests. We can show them that it can. We can show them that there is possibility for the dreams and the hopes and the, the, the pursuit of happiness that's, that's deep within them is possible. We can do that, but we must show them by fighting for that common ground, by building relationships and connecting. This election is possible, folks. Kim Reynolds only won with 50.3% of the vote. That's it. 50.3% of the votes. We know how to make up for those votes. We're the hardworking party folks, and we're gonna get to work in 2022. And I'm gonna close with this, because sometimes, you know, we, we might feel weak. You know, COVID dealt us a number. Sometimes we might be weary, but our founders, Iowa constitutional founders, they perhaps they saw a moment would come like this where we would need to remind each and every one of us where the true power exists. And so in the Constitution, in Section 2, this is what they told us. All political power is inherent in the people. Government is instituted for the protection, the security, and benefit of the people. And they have a right at all times to alter or reform the same whenever the public good may require. Folks, the public good requires it. We see it in our families. We see it within our next door neighbors. We see it within our communities. Are you going to do the work with me? Are you going to sign up to ensure that Iowa values and Iowa people become first over profits, over political interests, and over anything that, that doesn't abide with the people? Will you be with me? That sounds good. That sounds good. Go to DeGereForIowa.com. Sign up with me. Let's go do the work because Iowa is worth the work. Now it's, now it's sleeting. Now it's sleeting. Y'all take care. <laughs>